Good evening. It's Thursday, February 4th, 2021. Welcome as we gather for this evening reflection. I'm Joe, pastor at First Presbyterian Church here in Smithfield, North Carolina, in the heart of Johnson County. In preparation for this coming Sunday, the first Sunday in February, um, I'm uh, examining a, a theme of what it means to understand God as our creator. It, growing up Presbyterian, there's a question um, that many of us memorized what is, from what is called the Westminster Shorter Catechism in question one. What is the chief end of man? Or a more contemporary interpretation is, what is our chief purpose in life? And the answer is, the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Or again, our chief purpose is to give God glory and enjoy all that God has created. The first 12 questions of that catechism deal with God as creator. Some 21 years ago, um, somewhat late for me actually, uh, I was introduced to a German language poet, Rainer Maria Rilke. He was born in Prague in the 19th century. And he was a particular um, writer and poet whose writings wrestled with, and this is a quote, the difficulty of communion with the ineffable in an age of disbelief, solitude, and anxiety. It sounds like he had passed through several pandemics, um, much as we've experienced in the past year. Reading Rilke for the first time literally brought me to tears. And one quote in preparation for this Sunday, thinking about God's creative power, spoke to me in particular, and this is from Rilke. If your daily life seems poor, do not blame it. Blame yourself. Tell yourself that you are not poet enough to call forth its riches, for to the Creator there is no poverty and no poor indifferent place. That's from Letters to a Young Poet. Caught up in our own lives, we forget that part of our nature, made in the image of God, that we are creatures at the hand of our Creator, and sometimes our purpose is simply to be in awe and wonder and amazement at everything that is around us. That in itself is a purpose, a chief end, if you will. Tonight I want to read to you where a psalmist, David, uh, wrote a song, a hymn, a poem, nearly 3,000 years ago that shares this awe and wonder. Let us listen for God's word to us. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains, you are girded with might. Your si you silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs, and make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it, you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water, and you provide the people with grain for you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with the showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy, the meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain, they shout, and they sing 
together for joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight I'd offer this closing prayer as a celebration of all that God has created and how we are called simply to enjoy it and glorify God in doing so. Against the backdrop of infinite space, our planet appears so small, so vulnerable. Guide me, dear God, that I may cherish your earth and the life that it sustains with the best of my energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Amen. Tonight, I do have one closing prayer request. One of our dear members at First Presbyterian Church, uh, our brother Benny, is uh, battling with COVID-19 pneumonia, and he's been hospitalized. And I ask for your prayers uh, for him and for Pam. May the Holy Spirit bring us all comfort tonight, the light of Christ illumine us, and in that light, may the love of Christ abide in us, and above all, may the peace of God be with you until we meet again. Good night.